in lieu of the new GOG 250 overall survival results, we are here to talk about high-risk endometrial cancer. So we'll go over Portec 3, GOG 249, and GOG 258. This uh, schema is one of the best images to depict the inclusion criteria of each of these studies because um, there's quite a bit of overlap as you can see um, in the green we have 249 that'll be that'll include your high intermediate risk so it's over to the farthest left and then in the middle we have the red um, which is portec 3 which is um, obviously includes some high risk stage one two, and then stage two and three um, and no stage four and then you have 258 which includes three and four uh, not distant meds. So let's go over them. So first, we'll start with GOG 249. The question here is, does vaginal brachytherapy plus chemo increase recurrent free survival compared to EBRT in higher intermediate and high-risk endometrial cancer? The inclusion criteria for this study were the higher intermediate risk um, patients from GOG 99 criteria, stage 2 of any histology stage 1 or 2, stage 1 to 2, serous or clear cell with negative cytology. And these patients were randomized to vaginal brachytherapy plus three cycles of carbotaxol versus EBRT uh, 45 to 50 gray. Here you'll see a forest plot for the recurrence-free survival, and this is separated by different um, treatment of subgroups, as you can see on the left. And this is recurrence free survival, the overall survival plot, which I don't have um, in this presentation, but it's very similar. Um, to the right is favoring um, whole pelvic radiation, and to the left favors the arm with vaginal cuff brachytherapy plus chemotherapy. And there was no statistically significant evidence um, with respect to recurrence free survival or overall survival among the variables tested here. And the outcomes of 249 um, were that there was no evidence of vaginal brachytherapy and chemo being superior to EBRT in terms of recurrence-free survival or overall survival. And I have those uh, Kaplan-Meier curves here. So um, you can see that they looked at the 60-month recurrence-free and overall survival. Um, very similar, almost identical in the recurrence-free survival and very, very similar in the overall survival. There were more pelvic and periortic lymph node recurrences in the vaginal brachytherapy plus chemo arm, 4% um, in the EBRT and then 9% in the vag brachy chemo arm. There was no difference in distant or vaginal recurrences. And then patients reported more fatigue and more neurotoxicity in the vaginal brachytherapy chemo arm. In conclusion, 249, vaginal Brachytherapy plus chemo was not superior to whole pelvic radiotherapy and was associated with more frequent and severe acute toxicity. Pelvic RT alone remains effective, well-tolerated, and an appropriate adjuvant treatment in high-risk early-stage endometrial cancers of all histologies. Next, we'll look at Portec 3 And Portec 3 looked at adjuvant chemo radiotherapy versus EBRT alone for women with high-risk endometrial cancer. The inclusion criteria included endometrioid histology, stage 1A grade 3 plus LVSI, stage 1B grade 3, any stage 2 or 3, and then also included serous or clear cell, stage 1A, 1B, 2, and 3. So this is a really nice slide, and this is from um, Dr. Grodin. Um, who's at Mass Gen, and I, he has a wonderful GYOEDU lecture um, going into more details about endometrial cancer treatment. And so if you like this lecture or you want to learn even more about um, endometrial cancer therapies, um, definitely go over to GYOEDU, and there are a few lectures over there. Um, but this is a really nice depiction of the two arms. And so the inclusion criteria is on the left, and then um, these patients were stratified. And um, this is really nice because you can see the way um, the chemo RT arm lays out. 
And so when you're counseling patients about this study, if someone, you decided at Tumor Board that someone was going to do a Portec 3 chemo RT regimen, um, and the patient asks, well, what does that look like? Then you can tell them. So um, they'll get EBRT for the first five weeks, um, along with cisplatin on day one and day 28. They will then get a two-week break, followed by four cycles of carbotaxol. And then the EBRT alone is just five weeks. So um, keep in mind the regimen on the top for when you're discussing this with patients. And this study enrolled 686 patients. And here are the outcomes. So um, overarching, there was a significant improvement in failure-free and overall survival in women who received combination chemotherapy versus uh, EBRT. You can see on the right the overall survival in the first Kaplan-Meier survival curve. The um, overall survival at five years was 81.4% in the chemo RT arm and 76% in the radiotherapy arm. And then on the bottom is the failure-free survival, and um, that was 76.5 versus 69.1%. A post, -hoc, a post hoc analysis was performed, and you can see those results here. So um, we'll start with the left, which is women with stage 3 disease. And um, in Portec 3, they found that women with stage 3 disease had significantly lower overall survival and failure-free survival compared to stage 1 and 2 disease, irrespective of the treatment that they had received. And so then when they looked, um, at the data and these survival curves here are demonstrating, you can see um, that there was a significant improvement in overall and failure-free survival um, in the chemo radiotherapy arms for stage 3 disease. And then similarly, um, going to the right, women with serous cancers had worse overall survival and failure-free survival compared to other histology types. And when they looked at overall and failure-free survival broken down by treatment, there was a significant improvement in overall survival and failure-free survival in the chemo-radiotherapy arm compared to radiotherapy alone. And so conclusions here, um, as we had mentioned two slides ago, overall and failure-free survival were significantly improved in women with um, combination adjuvant chemotherapy and radiotherapy compared with those just treated with EBRT alone. The greatest benefit was seen in stage 3 and serous cancers. Um, they noted that distant METs were the first site of recurrence in most of these patients irrespective of treatment arm. Pelvic control is excellent for both groups. And as far as serious, serious adverse ev events, the chemo RT arm had a significant amount of toxicity. Um, and there was a long-term analysis of toxicity and quality of life in these patients. And um, it did show that combined uh, adjuvant chemotherapy and radiotherapy had long-lasting, clinically relevant negative impacts on quality of life, um, especially related to neuropathy. And so this is something to consider um, taking into account, you know, stage three and serous cancers um, were, had the greatest absolute benefit and um, really having these discussions with your patients on um, benefit and risks of treatment. Okay, and last but not least, GOG 258. And the purpose of this study was to evaluate the use of EBRT and chemo, um, which we'll reference as chemo radiotherapy, and which we did for Portec 3, compared with chemotherapy alone. And those who were eligible were stage 1 or 2 clear cell or serous with positive cytology and um, stage 3 or 4A. On the right are the two arms. So the first arm being EBRT to 45 gray plus or minus vaginal brachytherapy plus cisplatin on days 1 and 29, followed by four cycles of carboplatin at AUC of 5 plus paclitaxel at 175 milligrams per meter squared for four cycles versus carbo AUC of 5 plus uh, taxel at 175 every 21 days for six cycles. 
And you'll see here there um, was no difference in any subgroup, no statistically significant difference in uh, progression-free survival or overall survival um, in any subgroup. This is um, another slide from Dr. Grodin from GYOEDU, um, just noting that there were varied recurrence rates, um, no statistical significant difference, but as you can see here, um, the vaginal recurrence was increased in the chemotherapy-only arm um, at 7% from 2% in chemo-RT, and then looking at pelvic versus periaortic recurrence, um, this was elevated in the chemotherapy only arm 20 percent versus 11 percent in the chemo rt and then distant recurrence was increased in the chemo rt arm versus the chemo arm 27 um, versus 21 percent so this was not these were not statistically significant as you can see um, on the left um, with some of the stats however um, just interesting patterns of recurrence um, conclusion of gog 258 was um there was significantly more toxicity in the chemo RT arm, and um, overall chemo RT did not improve recurrence free or overall survival, newly just in, compared to chemotherapy alone. Okay, so hopefully now when you look at this photo, it um, makes a little bit more sense based on the eligibility inclusion criteria for each study. Um, and I just put a small note down in the right hand corner that um, now when we're thinking about advanced and recurrent stage endometrial cancer we will um, be adding immunotherapy based on some of the late breaking um, studies that we heard at SGO so very exciting time for endometrial cancer um, please let me know if you have any questions and otherwise I hope this was helpful